Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a carpenter's marking knife from this fine piece of ironmongery, a lawnmower blade. So the intention here is for this to be a nice, easy project that you can do with pretty simple tools. This is one of those things that you could do with an angle grinder, you can do it with a belt grinder, you can do it with a file, all kinds of things will work. Today we learned two things. First, some strategies for dealing with mystery steel, and second, how to make a marking knife. Let's start with the knife. A marking knife is a small tool used by carpenters to scribe very accurate lines for cutting wood or other material. Now it has the advantage of giving a much more precise line than say a pencil. So it's especially useful for making precise cuts on things like dovetails and mortises where being off by you know a sixteenth of an inch is a pretty big problem. This project is pretty simple and can be done with simple readily available tools and materials. I'll cheat and use a couple of tools that only knife makers will have, but I'll tell you some ways to get around that. Now I get a lot of viewers sending me notes saying, hey, I don't have much money, can I make a knife out of, you know, a lawnmower blade or a leaf spring or a piece of circular saw, whatever. And the short answer is, yes, maybe. See, a GM 3500 leaf spring is not the same as a Volvo truck leaf spring. Which means that before you go stampeding off to make a knife, you have to do some testing. So that's what we'll do here. So if you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll know that I'm not a big fan of what knife makers call mystery steel. Every steel's heat treated differently, and unless you know exactly what you're dealing with, you can waste a lot of time trying to make steel do something it's just not capable of doing. But that doesn't mean you can't use mystery steel at all. Before you use some mysterious piece of steel, you have to test it out. And so we're going to go through a process to determine roughly what kind of steel this is, if it's heat treatable, and assuming that it is heat treatable, we'll figure out an approach to make it nice and hard. And hopefully we can use it to make a cool little knife. We'll start with this lawnmower blade. I'll cut off a piece of the blade. I'm using an abrasive chop saw, but the steel is not heat treated to a hard condition, so you could do this with a hacksaw. A cutoff wheel on an angle grinder will get you there too. Anyway, so now we've got this steel. We'll heat it up in my forge until it gets non-magnetic and then quench it in peanut oil. Failure. When I whack it on the anvil, it doesn't break, and it also doesn't pass the file test, meaning that when I rub the surface with a file, the file bites into the steel. These two tests both show that it has failed to harden in peanut oil. So we'll try again. This time, we'll harden the same little piece of lawnmower blade in water. Whack it on the anvil. Look, it cracks. That's a good thing. File test? Yep. The file skates across the steel. So my guess is that we're dealing with something in the general realm of 1045, 1050, maybe even 1070. Basically, medium carbon steel just on the edge of hardenability. Anyway, I feel pretty good about what I've got here, and I know I can heat treat it. So let's dive in. I start by cutting off a small piece of the lawnmower blade. I cut it laterally so the piece is only about two and a half inches long and three quarters of an inch wide, but you could go long ways down the blade and cut a longer piece if you like. I'll clean the crud and rust off using a heavy grit sandpaper. I've got it mounted on a machinist's block, but you could use any flat surface, masonite, glass, whatever. Now, marking knives can be made lefty, righty, or can be cut with a diamond profile that can cut ambidextrously will make a right hand knife, but you can easily enough make one with a diamond profile. That'll cut with either of two surfaces, allowing you to cut right hand or left hand. 
The basic idea of the marking knife, however it's made though, is that it needs to be flat on one side with a single bevel. That's why it only cuts in one direction. This feature allows you to mark very tightly, say to the dovetail that you're about to cut. So in order to cut right-handed, you need a bevel on the right side with the point on the left edge. So I'll mark that. Then I'll use a file to file down to that line. Of course, you can also use a hacksaw or an angle grinder, cut off wheel on a Dremel, bench grinder. I'm showing this so that you'll see that this can be done with nothing but a $10 file. And it takes less time than you might think. Now I'll bevel it. Don't forget to make sure you don't bevel the wrong side. I take the bevel almost all the way down, but not quite. I leave a little bit of thickness on the edge. Water hardening is tough on steel and we don't want it to crack, so we just leave a little extra material there. Now we'll make the handle. I'm using a nice piece of zero cote, but any wood will do. Ash, maple, whatever. I'll use my bandsaw to chew out a little slot the same width as the blade is thick. We're going to be using a couple of brass pins to hold the blade in, so we'll drill 8 inch holes for the pins. First hole, then I'll use an old drill bit as a locator pin, then I'll drill the second hole. Now I'll rough the profile of the handle. Mine's going to have an extremely crude but ugly rectangular profile. Like I said, I'm not going for aesthetics here. Then I'll soften all the corners to make it more comfortable to hold. I do it with a belt grinder, but you could use a rasp or a plane or whatever your favorite way of shaping wood is, that's what you ought to use. I'll put in a little finger relief and round off the front edge so that there's enough room that the handle doesn't interfere with the sharpening of the blade. But that's about as fancy as this gets. You could drill a hole so you can hang it on the wall if you want to. Now it's time to heat treat the steel. I'll be using my forge here to heat treat the steel. For those of you who are new to knife making, Yes, edge tools must be heat treated in order to be hard enough to hold an edge. No, you can't skip this step. I mention this because, okay, I told you simple, readily available tools, blah, 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 and then I go run into my forge, which is a tool that normal human beings do not have sitting there in the shop next to the old table saw. I must be a total liar, right? But wait, you do not have to use a forge. You can use your charcoal grill, or if you have an acetylene torch, or an oxypropane torch, or with something this small, map gas will work too. For the torch method, check out my how to make a machete video. For the charcoal method, watch my tastefully named video, Get Hard, How to Heat Treat a Knife with Charcoal. Then choose your poison. Okay, so here's what I do. I heat my blade in the forge, watching as it starts to glow red. Then I touch it with this little magnet on a stick. I want to reach 1500 Fahrenheit or about 800 centigrade. At around 1425 Fahrenheit, steel ceases to attract a magnet. So once I reach that heat, I'll just run it through the flame for about 10 seconds or so and plunge it into the water. Next, I test it with the file to make sure it hardened. All good, nice and hard. Then I'll put it directly into my heat treating oven at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But you can just put it in your kitchen oven, works just fine. Leave it there for an hour, take it out, clean off the scale with sandpaper, then I'll put the final grind on the bevel. You can do all this on an Arkansas stone if you want, I mean, if you're crazy, but a $60 bench grinder is a lot better. Me, over to the belt grinder. Same difference though, any method will work. Next, I'll install the blade. Mix some two-part epoxy, slather away, insert the blade,
drive in the pins. Clean up the excess epoxy. I use a little lacquer thinner on the paper towel, but any number of solvents will work. Once the epoxy is dried, I'll file the pins flush. Sure I did. I wouldn't have even considered doing it with my belt grinder. So once the pins are flush, I'll finish rounding everything off. and then sand it. I'm taking it up to about 400 grit, but what grit you go to is dependent on the wood you use. The more you paid for the wood, the higher grit sandpaper you have to use. This was once considered to be a cabinet maker's rule of thumb, but it's now been proven by science. Xerocote is one of those woods that's beautiful no matter what you do to it, so I'm not going to give it a finish. I'm just going to wax it with common furniture wax, and then buff it out. And there we have it, ready to start marking dovetails. So I hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, the intent was for it to be a nice simple project that you could do with simple tools. Uh, we're going to do a follow-up video to this, which you can uh, find a, a link to here, uh, which will be a little more advanced. Similar kind of tool will come out of it, but it's going to be a Japanese style marking knife. Uh, that's going to have a forge welded bit that's welded onto a um, softer wrought iron backing. This is kind of a traditional approach that you'll see in many different kinds of Japanese uh, cutlery. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, here are a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades, and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you'll find examples of my work along with instructional videos showing all aspects of Japanese sword making, including forging and polishing, how to make hamones, and how to make fittings, scabbards, and handles for Japanese swords.